Well, hey there, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering, but I also like to talk about Arduino. Hey, in this lecture, we're going to talk about using the um, DC brush motor that came with your Arduino kit, uh, and as such, by the end of this lecture, you, what you should be able to do is create all the circuitry needed to drive a brush DC motor in a single direction using the Arduino power supply module and a 2N2222 transistor. Now, some of the more advanced students may be like, hey, shouldn't we be using an h bridge? Yeah, hey, we'll get to that in a future lecture. For now, let's just drive it in one direction. All right, so the components we're going to use from your Elegoo Super Starter Kit, we're going to use the power supply module. Previous lecture, I talked about that. Of course, we're going to use the breadboard. We're going to use some resistors, specifically 1K. We're going to use the, the uh, fan blade and the DC, uh, 4 to 6 volt DC motor. That's the brush DC motor. We're going to use a, a diode here. They call it a diode rectifier. And, of course, we're going to use the 2N2222. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, the power supply module is going to be big on this thing. We don't want to damage our Arduino, so you'll need to see lecture 16 if you haven't already watched that to figure out how that works. All right, so here's the basic circuit. So what we got here, uh, you got a resistor. It's kind of hard to miss. Got it in red. You got a resistor. It's a 1K. We got the transistor. That's the 2N2222. We got the diode. And we got the motor, and then we got the 5 volts coming from the power module, and we're grounding that transistor also for, to the ground from the power module. So, hey, let's look at these one at a time, shall we? So, um, first of all, about this resistor, um, that's actually a pretty important piece because we've got, uh, you know, 5 volts coming from Arduino, its power supply. We've got 5 volts coming from the power module. And uh, the thing is, neither one will be exactly 5 volts. So maybe the power module is wanting to put out 4.9. Maybe the Arduino is wanting to put out 5.1. And what they're going to do is they're each going to try to servo to their value. And they're going to get overheated if you have the two connected. So what we do is we put a 1K resistor in there. And that limits the current. And so it sort of buffers the two voltages and makes everybody happy. So the crucial role of this resistor is... It allows you to drive the motor from one power supply while you're doing the logic from another. Um, the 1K resistors come with your Arduino kit. You know, they're shown there on the left. You'll notice it says 1K on the little yellow paper. Uh, if all else fails, get out an ohmmeter and just measure it. At any rate, so that's the deal with the resistor. Now for the transistor, we're going to use the old faithful 2N2222. This is probably the most popular general purpose transistor uh, today. You know, if you go to uh, Google and just type in 2N2222, tons of stuff will come up. If you go to Amazon and type in 2N2222, you know, you can buy these things from Amazon. I mean, these are well known. Now, as shown, that's in what's called a TO92 case. You'll notice that it's rounded on one side, flat on the other, and that is very, very important to figure out well, which one's pin one. Well, look at this drawing. When the flat side is facing you, pin one's on the left, pin three is on the right, and pin two is, well, in the middle. Now, in the transistor um, schematic next to it, you'll notice pin two is the base, pin three is the collector, pin four, or one is the emitter. Now, I know some of you have had uh, circuits one where you talked about some transistors, so you know what that terminology means, but others of you are like, what are you talking about? So let's consider our little spigot there on the lower left. It's kind of the same thing as a transistor. You've got your base, that's the little knob, and the idea is you can turn the, turn the base and that'll affect the flow from the collector to the emitter, and that's pretty much what a transistor is. They operate pretty much in two modes, either what's called saturation mode uh, or linear mode. So saturation mode is like, I remember when I was a kid, we'd wash the car or something, and maybe I'd be pulling the hose and I'd yell back to my brother to turn it on, and I'd always say, full blast! And uh, that's kind of what it is in saturation mode. It's either off or it's full blast. Uh, in linear mode, which is actually the mode we're going to have here, things are more or less proportional. At any rate, so what we've got is you've got this Arduino pin on the Arduino. It's got to be one of the PWM pins. It's got to have the little squiggle on the board. And you're going to put the 1K resistor to that and to the base of the transistor. And then you're going to 
put the emitter to the power modules ground. You're going to put the collector to the black wire on the motor. Now, what you're also going to do is hook up that diode to the black wire on the motor, and then the red wire on the motor is going to go to the power module. All right, so uh, let's talk about that motor. You know, the, if you happen to hook this motor up backwards, it doesn't really matter, uh, other than it will go the opposite direction. So it's uh, basically just um, uh, coils, electromagnet, and if you see the lecture on uh, how BC brush DC motors work, you'll realize, oh yeah, it doesn't matter which way you do it. But it is kind of the main player here. Uh, one thing I would note is the motor is a little bit fragile, and uh, it might be worthwhile to take a zip tie or something to kind of secure those wires. I think if, if you don't, or you just use some tape or whatever, um, you know, it looks like if just from motion back and forth, they're going to snap off. Uh, you'll see a picture here in the inset showing what I do with mine. All right, so uh, the next thing here is the diode. Now, uh, what we're going to use is we're going to use this uh, 1N4001 uh, that came with it, your kit. Uh, you, I, I think it, there's a wide variety of diodes you can use, but we're going to use this one. Now, notice here the little silver marking. That's on the negative side. You see it there? So we're going to take the, the positive and hook it to the negative side of the motor. Hmm. And we're going to take the negative side of the diode and hook it to the power supply. Why is that? So uh, here's how the logic goes. So motors are basically coils of wire. Yeah, coils of wires are inductors. So what happens when you abruptly open the circuit to an abduct inductor? So you've got the transistor, it's on, the current's flowing, and then you uh, remove the voltage from the base, it abruptly turns off, and the uh, current in the inductor abruptly goes from, say, you know, whatever it is, to zero. That sounds like if it's truly a square, really abrupt, that's the slope is negative infinity, yeah? Okay, well, let's go back to circuits ones. What's the voltage across an inductor? Uh, v equals L, that's the inductance, times di dt. Well, you just told me, well, I told you, that the current is negative infinity, so if we have a voltage equals inductance times negative infinity, that's a very large voltage. It's negative, but the, the point is, is by abruptly turning off a motor, you create this very large negative voltage that can damage the circuitry. It can damage the transistor. It can damage all kinds of things. So the bottom line is we have it hooked this way so that when that voltage starts to go negative, the diode conducts, clamps it, and you don't have you don't damage your circuit. So uh, in this configuration, the diode is called a uh, flyback. It's a flyback diode. Um, you know whether you're doing a little teeny motor like in in tandem's uh, uh, T-slim uh, insulin pump. You know we've got flyback resistors on that, uh, or flyback uh, diodes rather. And uh, you know when I used to do um, large motors on aircraft, you know, we'd have 60, 80, 100 amps, 270 volts. We always had tons of flyback because this was a real situation where, you know, when you have a coil and you abruptly change a current, you get very, very large voltages and you can get some pretty spectacular explosions if you don't adequately uh, protect against it. All right, so I want to show another view of wiring this thing up. Now, this is kind of in the greater context of your project where what you're going to do is you're going to take your seven segment display with the shift with or without the shift register that's up to you you're going to take your IR remote and you're going to select say you push one and then the seven segment display pushes one and then the motor will go at low and if you push two the motor will go medium speed push three motor will go high speed push zero it'll turn off any rate the point is what we're doing is using this IR to control the fan speed and the key thing I want to show in this view is that um, the, the, we're isolating the power in the ground. You know, the power module comes, I guess its power from the 9-volt battery. The motor gets its, its power from that. The, the transistor's hooked to it. And you see the upper side, upper half of that uh, 
proto board when it's laid sideways, you know, that is completely isolated from the logic down below. The only place the Arduino, the digital logic, interfaces with the motor driver is that cyan color where that's going through the 1K resistor. Other than that, the 5 volts in the ground is all coming from Arduino. And that's one of the real big concepts we're trying to push on this. I'm trying to push on this project is, you know, this idea that you can sometimes isolate the power supply and have a buffer and, and also just driving a motor and while well, also using a segment display and an IR remote. Actually, it's a pretty cool project, I think. A lot of things coming together. At any rate, final comments here. So one thing is it's very important to get the pins right. You know, slow down, double check. Yeah, I got pin one right. I got pin two right. I got pin three right. Uh, if you get those backwards, those transistors can go boom. Um, it's important to get the pins right for the transistors so you don't damage it. It's important to get the pins right for the diodes so you're not just shorting. If you get in the wrong way when you put the voltage, it'll just short the voltage and it won't be a flyback. Uh, and as a reminder, we don't want to drive the motor directly off the Arduino. Um, I talked about this in the previous lecture on the power supply module, but the bottom line is Yes, it'll work for a little while, but it'll heat and it'll get hot and it'll definitely shorten the life of your Arduino. So, you know, you, you can work for a bit, but you definitely do not want to do that long term. And then the other thing, remember that 1K resistor is absolutely necessary for uh, what we're doing. All right. So um, thanks for listening. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos, you can go to TomArchConsulting.com. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can just do Dr. Tom Ulrich or sometimes Engineering Leadership Guy seems to work. At any rate, uh, if, if you don't mind, give me a like, subscribe, that sort of thing that helps me out. But um, in the meantime, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later.